Welcome to a video on arc length using polar equations. If the polar equation is differentiable on the closed interval from alpha to beta, then the length of the graph from alpha to beta is given as the def integral from alpha to beta of the square root of f of theta squared plus f prime of theta squared d theta, or we can replace f of theta with r and f prime of theta with dr d theta. So these two equations are the same, just written with different notation. This formula can be derived using the arc length formula for parametric equations, but we're not gonna take the time to do that in this video. We're gonna go ahead and look at an example. Here we wanna determine the arc length of r equals one minus sine theta, already graphed here, on the interval from zero to two pi. So we wanna find the arc length of this entire curve. However, if we want, we can take it, however, this curve does have symmetry, we could find the arc length of half of this curve and then double it to find the total arc length. And let's go ahead and do it that way. So we'll set it up to find the arc length from here to here, and then we'll multiply this by two. So we'll start integrating here, and then we'll stop integrating here. So our lower limit of integration is going to be negative pi over two, and our upper limit of integration is going to be positive pi over two. Notice when theta is negative pi over two, we'd have one minus negative one, so r is equal to two, so this corresponds to this point right here. And then when theta is pi over two, we have one minus one, which would be zero, so we're at the pole right here. So this arc length is going to equal two, because we're doubling it, times the def integral from negative pi over two to pi over two, of the square root of r squared, so we have one minus sine theta squared, plus dr d theta squared. Well, the derivative of r with respect to theta would be negative cosine theta. We'll square that, and all this integrated with respect to theta. So let's go ahead and start to simplify our radicand So if we square this, we'll have one minus two sine theta plus sine squared theta. This will be plus cosine squared theta. And notice we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, that's equal to one. So we can combine this one with this one and we'll have the square root of two minus two sine theta. Let's copy this over to a new slide. Now we're not gonna be able to integrate this in its current form. We're gonna have to multiply and divide this by its conjugate. So we're gonna have the square root of two plus two sine theta divided by the square root of two plus two sine theta. And if it helps, we can put this over one. Let's go ahead and find this product. The numerator is going to be the square root of four minus four sine squared theta. Our denominator is gonna stay the same. Let's go ahead and factor four minus four sine squared theta. So notice we have four times the quantity one minus sine squared theta, but one minus sine squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta. So our numerator becomes the square root of four cosine squared theta, which simplifies to two cosine theta. So our numerator is two cosine theta. Our denominator stays the same. But now we should be able to integrate this using u substitution. Remember the derivative of sine is cosine. So if we let u equal two plus two sine theta,
then du is going to equal two cosine d theta. Notice our integrand does contain two cosine theta d theta, and so we'll have the square root of u in the denominator. So let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. We'll leave off the limits of integration right now because these are in terms of theta, and we are rewriting this in terms of u. So all of this becomes du, and this would be one over the square root of u, which would be the same as u to the negative one-half power. Let's go ahead and integrate this. We're gonna have two times u to the one-half divided by one-half. Let's go ahead and convert this back to theta. So dividing by one-half is the same as multiplying by two. So we're gonna have four times u to the one-half is the same as the square root, and u is two plus two sine theta. And we need to evaluate this at the upper and lower limits of integration. So let's go ahead and do that on the next page. So we'll first replace theta with pi over two We'll first replace theta with pi over two, so we'll have two plus, the well, sine of pi over two is one, so we'll have two times one, that'll be two, minus two plus sine of negative pi over two. Well, sine of negative pi over two is negative one, and two times negative one is negative two. So we're gonna have four times the square root of four minus the square root of zero, this is gonna give us four times two, which is equal to eight. So let's go back to our original slide now. This is the arc length of this curve from zero to two pi. Remember when we set this up, we did double it, so this is the total arc length from zero to two pi, or the entire curve. Okay, I hope this explanation was helpful. Thank you.